God has special gifts for you. Today's message, you will find out about the gifts of the Spirit and the gift of God's grace and salvation to your life. He wants to fill you and use you for His glory and honor. Be blessed by today's message. All through the house, there are gifts. Our text this morning is Ephesians 4, verses 7 to 13. Eric is going to read God's Word. All of you read out loud with Eric. Amen. God bless you as you read out loud together. But to each one of us, grace has been given, as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until all, we all reach the unity in faith and in the knowledge attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is powerful, that it's quick, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the divining asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrows. God, I pray now you'd help me to preach your word with power and authority. I ask you to speak to every person in this house. Let the name of Christ be glorified and your people edified. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated in the house of God. All through the house, all through the house, there are gifts. When I think about Christmas, Christmas for me, of course, is first and foremost Jesus. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, second word that I think of when I think of Christmas is family. That's why I get a little, well, I get emotional anyways, but I, I just... I, I'm so glad my girls, my sons can be with me and my wife. I just wish one Christmas I'm going to have all the whole Stuart gang up here because Stuart, uh, Christmas is family. I have to admit that the other thing I think about, and I think a lot of people think about on Christmas is gifts. I remember the, I, my favorite gift as a kid, uh, I was... About the ninth grade, I had taken some guitar lessons. I was good enough to strum the guitar and sing along. I had a really great guitar teacher and should have excelled in the guitar, but I learned just enough to be able to play and sing, and I, I, I was just content with that. But I really enjoyed playing the guitar. My dad bought an old Indian-made guitar for me. The, the strings were way off the front and off the neck, and you just had to squeeze to make, and it would hurt your fingers, and the tone was just absolutely horrible. And we went to some other missionary's house. They were, I remember, Church of God missionaries by the name of Turner. They had boys, children that were older than me, and one of their sons had apparently played the guitar, and he had graduated long before I was to ever graduate. I think I may have met him. I don't remember, but anyways, much older than me. He had left his guitar in India, and we had gone to visit the Turners sitting in their house, and somehow she, the conversation came up that I sang and played guitar, and she walked into one of the bedrooms, and she came walking out of the bedroom with a guitar case she popped it open it was a sunburst color I took that guitar out and held in my hand the first time a Gibson guitar those of you who play guitar know Gibson is cool I took that guitar in my hand and I start and it was the t it was just it was like the difference between a crow and a uh, and an opera singer. I mean, compared to the old guitar I had and the, this Gibson, it was just, I, I just fell in love with the guitar. And she could see it. And she looked at my dad. She said, well, she said, if you'd like it, I, I can sell it to you. And my dad said, how much? And my eyes were lighting up and I was grinning like a possum. And, and, and she, she, I remember she said 300 rupees which in those days was equivalent to somewhere between $40 and $50. For those of you who know Gibson guitar, that was not a lot. 
But my dad, I well remember, I looked at him, I said, Dad, will you buy it? And he looked, he said, oh, that's, that's really, that's a lot of money for me. And I was downcast. I said, Daddy, please buy it. We got in the car, and you know the way kids are. I just, you know, Daddy, I want the guitar. And he said, well, it's just a lot of money. I was in boarding school, as a lot of you know, and when Christmas break or Christmas vacation came around, Mom and Dad came up to get us. They took us down to where Mom and Dad lived. And some time before Christmas, I have to admit, I snuck into my mom and dad. I don't really think I snuck. Well, maybe I did. I snuck into mom and dad's bedroom, and I looked underneath their bed. And lo and behold, t'was the night before Christmas. <sighs> And Christmas morning when dad sent me, we've got this silly little uh, family tradition. I may even do it this year. Who knows with 20-something-year-old kids, I still may do it. Uh, well, we send, we, we write, write little notes. If you want your gift, look in mom's closet. And there's a note there. If you want a gift, look in the refrigerator. And if you want a gift, we send them all over the house. And find, dad had sent me on a goose chase for what I knew I was getting. And I knew where it was. But I played along. And I looked here and there. And when I got under the bed, my Gibson guitar was there. And I, I kept it. And until literally just a couple of days before I came, came to Lemonster. That was the coolest gift. <laughs> All through the house, there are gifts. This morning, I want you to know that God is the giver of gifts, and he gives good gifts to his children. And I believe with all of my heart, here's the big idea, God has a gift for you, some of you have already found it under the bed, and some of you today need to find it. And when you find it, you've got to use it for his glory and honor. That was the cool thing about that old Gibson guitar. I was able to take it and strum it and sing gospel songs. God's got gifts for you. As I look at the scripture, I find out that, number one, there are different types of gifts. Different types of gifts. First of all, there is the gift of salvation, which is, of course, the greatest gift of all. That gift is given to anyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, believing that he died on the cross and that he rose from the dead. And when you put your faith in Christ and invite him to be the Lord of your life, making a decision to follow him as the Lord of your life, by God's grace, your sins are forgiven. His spirit comes to live inside you. You become a child of God. You have received the gift of salvation. You that are here this morning, I do not know all of you. I certainly don't know the spiritual condition of your life. But I am here today to say to you, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your religious background, today God offers his gift of salvation to you. If you will put your faith in Jesus Christ today, he will forgive your sins. He will come into your life. His spirit will fill you. And when that happens, there's something miraculous, something wonderful that happens. Suddenly you know that you're a child of God. And that's the greatest gift of all. Amen. The second gift is what the Bible calls the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, when you give your heart to Christ, the blood of Jesus washes you clean and the spirit of God comes to live inside you. But the gift of the Holy Spirit comes to your life when you receive what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is simply the overflowing presence of the Spirit of God in a believer's life. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the reason, the primary reason you need it, our Lord said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and then you shall be my witnesses. You see, when you receive the gift of, the, a gift of salvation, it is... The power that enables you to become, first of all, the child of God, but it is the guarantee of eternal life. But it's not enough that you have received a gift. You've got to share the gift with somebody else. It is our duty as believers to share the gift of salvation with others, to tell others about Jesus who died on the cross and Jesus who rose from the dead and invite them to receive the gift of salvation. That's your duty. And in order to fill that duty, God gives you the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit anointing in your life to help you to be able to share the gospel with boldness and courage and supernatural faith. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the gift of the Holy Spirit. The third 
It's what the Bible calls the gifts of the Spirit. One is the gift of the Spirit, that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He gives to us what is called the gifts of the Spirit. And there are three areas that, are, that I'll mention this morning. First of all, are the positional gifts. Say positional. Positional speaks of what I would call the leadership gifts. Those like apostle, um, evangelist, prophet, pastor, teacher. These are positional gifts that the, that the Word of God, we read it here this morning, here in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We read this. These positional gifts are given to the church to help the church, to lead the church in its spiritual journey. And so there are these positional gifts that are given to certain people. Not everyone's called to be an evangelist. Not everyone's called to be a pastor. Not everyone's called to be a prophet. Not everyone's called to be a teacher. But there are certain people that God, by his grace, lays his hands on them and he calls them, appoints them. I was reading just a couple days ago about military orders, and that's the way I see it. When I surrendered my heart to Christ and I received the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit came to live in me and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. Then God, by His grace, one day, and I remember that day well when God spoke to me and He gave me orders, marching orders, to be a full-time preacher of the gospel. Today I stand here as your pastor, not under any ability of my own, but I stand here truly indeed as the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is just his gift that he has laid upon me, this leadership position. And I count it the greatest honor in all the world to serve you and to serve God. Secondly, not only positional gifts, but we see functional gifts. Those are mentioned in Romans 12, verses 6 to 7. Functional speaks of service gifts. Uh, gifts like help and administration. Um, gifts like leadership and mercy and generosity, giving. There's some, a lot, most people, in fact, hopefully all Followers of Christ give their tithe and hopefully they'll give some additional offering. But there are few people I have met in my lifetime who literally have a gift of giving. If you don't have that gift, don't push it. I, you probably won't ever hear a preacher say that again. So mark it on your calendar. I said it once in my life. Don't push it. If you don't have the gift of giving, don't get discouraged when you see somebody else. I had a guy on my ministry team some years ago. One, he was actually my worship leader. I would scold him, stupidly. I would scold him because if he got anything, he gave it away. I mean, he would get money, he'd give it away. He'd get gifts, he'd give it away. He just had absolutely, uh, literally a gift of giving. And when he gave, he'd just laugh. It was just, it was just like the greatest joy of his life. Just, he would laugh and give stuff away, and I'd scold him, and he'd laugh. He'd say, oh, God, to give me more. And I'd say, Robert, you just, you know, I don't mind you giving, but you got to use some intelligence, use some sense. And he just laugh at me and he keep giving. And today, since, uh, since our family left and I released him into his own ministry, today God has taken him literally around the world. He has preached in New Zealand and in, all, in Australia. He's preached in Germany. And, and I couldn't even tell you all the countries in the last three years that Robert Roy has preached in. God has blessed him. He keeps on giving because Robert keeps on giving God. God keeps on giving him. He has that just that joyful gift of giving. And there are people who have a gift of mercy. They're just merciful. Well, I could preach a long time on that. Those are gifts of service. You ask the Lord. Operational gifts. Operational gifts are what I would call the miraculous gifts. Those are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. And I would say to you that those gifts... Uh, you know, tongues, interpretation of tongues, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, gift of miracles, gift of healings. These gifts, supernatural gifts of God, God gives uh, in specific times for specific needs. A couple of weeks ago, just, just uh, a couple of nights ago, one of our young adults shared with me that I was preaching a couple of weeks ago, I think on the the week that I was preaching on um, there's healing in the house. 
I just, I, I don't even remember the context of it, but I mentioned a couple names, and as I mentioned those names, I mentioned the name of somebody that that young adult had been talking to that very week, had been talking to that very week about forgiveness, and both of them just realized that the Holy Spirit used me in that moment to speak their name. I didn't even realize what I was doing, but the Holy Spirit used me for that specific person, for that specific problem at that very specific time. The gifts of the Spirit, those operational gifts that are powerful, supernatural gifts that transform, at times transform people's lives. By God's grace, he's used me in different gifts of the Spirit. And my prayer is that not only will he use your pastor, but he uses you in many of the gifts of the Spirit. These are the gifts that God gives. The second thing I'll say very quickly that was the different types of gifts. The second thing I want to say to you is the distribution of the gifts. The distribution of the gifts. We, we read it there in he, he, uh, uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, where he says in verse number seven, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Uh, my daddy, when he gave me that guitar, you remember what he said before he bought it? I don't know whether he was playing games. I really don't think he was playing. I think it was really $50 in those days was a sacrifice for my dad. As I was studying this week and I was preparing for this message and I thought about that and then I thought about this where it says, according to his grace, I, I began to get excited, David. I began to realize that the gifts of God are given by God's grace, which are unlimited. Hallelujah. Wow, they are unlimited. God's grace is so big and his riches are so great. You don't need to have any fear or any doubt that God can give you gifts supernaturally, abundantly in your life. He can pour it out and you will suddenly wake up one day and be surprised how God has gifted you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The distributions of God are by his mercy, by his grace. Nothing special I've done. God's used me. God's used me, but it's God's grace. And here's the second thing you know.